Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wakeham on this lovely sunny morning. Um, I know personally, I think I'm glad to be back. <laughs> I brought the sunshine with me from Austria for you, so you're all right. Um, yeah, I had a lovely time in Austria. It seems a long time since I was last at Wakeham, so um, I think I'm doing all the jobs that uh, everybody's giving me this morning. I think there is payback time from the stewards. <laughs> Um, I hope you've all had a lovely summer. It's lovely to see so many of you this morning. Does anybody have any family news that they would like to share this morning? Well, this isn't my family, though. Um, it's church family. We are now. We now have the power. You'll be pleased to know that over the garden studio, we now have a full range of photovoltaic cells. And we are on every sunny day. We are feeding power into the grid. So uh, we're, it's on our, we're on our way to becoming a silver award for Eco Church. So uh, it's taken a long time, but we've finally got there. So it's the roof next. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope the sunshine keeps shining. Uh, just to say that the community cinema will be on next Saturday. And the, the film that we'll be showing is A Man Called Otto, which is um, a really good film starring Tom Hanks as a grumpy widower who uh, uh, is sort of enlivened by a young family who move in next door to him. And uh, if you haven't seen it, it's really good. So usual time, 7 o'clock. Thank you. Ooh. I'll go there first and then I'll come back. Jim and I and all of her family were in North Wales celebrating my daughter Sophie's mum, or Sophie, sorry, Sophie, Sophia's mum's 50th birthday, and they climbed. Do you want to say where you climbed? Uh, Snowdon. You climbed Snowdon. How quick? How long did it take you? Um, I'm not sure. Like, I don't, I don't really remember. Did you go up and down? Yeah. Did you go in the train? <laughs> no, sorry, not the train. No, sorry, I, we couldn't get booked for that. But I went on. We went on. Alexander, grandson, Jim, and I, when they were climbing Snowden, we um, we went on the you know the trip, the train, the steam train round the lakes. But unfortunately, I fell at, in a in a wood place and I rolled down a path and hit a rock. It was a sad ending. I got help back on the train, and people were coming to try and help lift me to Alexander and Jim, but they got me back. But I didn't dwell on it because it was a lovely scenic trip. It is lovely going around that lake. Well, I'm glad to see that you're, you're here this morning in one piece. I just want to say thank you, God, for a, a wonderful uh, holiday last week, five days in Cleethorpes. Um, I took our grandson, James. Uh, Charlotte went to visit her grandmother up in Annick, which is perhaps a little bit more scenic than Cleethorpes, but never mind. We had great fun in the leisure pool um, at Cleethorpes because there's a wave machine, there's a flume, and we, James went down the flume about 20 times. I held his goggles each time, so I was very valuable. And the wave machine nearly knocked me for six, but it was um, great fun, and we were, had a lovely time, relaxing time in our caravan. Thank you. Just to say, we do have another meeting going on in room five this morning, so if you do see people wandering past the door, I will shut them in a minute. Yeah. Just in case you see people wandering down the corridor, we do know that there's another... Yeah, I'm just saying, that I think we've got another meeting, if you need to get out. Let me know. And I'm just looking round to see. I think we have somebody that's got a birthday tomorrow. <laughs> and I think, I'm not going to give it away, but I think it's a bit of a significant birthday tomorrow, isn't it, Robin? He's, uh, Robin said it, not me. Robin is 70 tomorrow. So happy birthday to Robin. I expect you may have some plans organised with the family, Robin? Yes, he does. Not <laughs> till later in the week. But, uh, so that's really good news. So happy birthday to Robin. And if nobody else has got any more family news... Oh, 
Oh, Jean and Kevin, yeah. Apparently, there was a bit of a miscommunication from somebody who said she'd got it from their daughters, but actually it was 53 years of wedding anniversary this year, not 50. So they've done three, three more years, so it, that's even better, isn't it? We'll put that... <laughs> okay. Monty, have you got something you want to share? Come on, then. What have you got? I'm excited to, to shop. I think you're going somewhere s into a different room this week, aren't you? Where are you going? Are you going to start, no, are you going to start the section? Are you going to start the section? I'm going to start proper reception. Oh, he's starting proper reception. Well done, Monty. That's really, there's lots of people starting new schools, new year groups, and everything else this week. So we do think of the children as they go back to school. And now I'm going to hand over to Jerry. Uh, welcome to our service this morning. Um, Richard will introduce our theme a little bit uh, in a more detail a little later. But we hope you will take this opportunity to think about your relationship with God and what he is calling you to do. On the screen, we can you say this prayer together. Lord Jesus, as the summer holiday comes to an end, with the new term just about to start, we come here today with lots of different thoughts and feelings. Help us to see you, hear you, and learn more about your love today. Amen. We have our first hymn, Oh Jesus, I Have Promised. Let us pray. God of all, thank you that we are invited to learn about you. Thank you that we are invited to follow you. Thank you that we are invited to walk with you. Thank you that we are invited to know you and love you. Amen. 
But Lord Jesus, we're sorry for the times when we stop listening to you, when we stop following you, and we try, when we try to do our own thing. Forgive us. Amen. Okay. Um, we're not going to the fun fair today, I'm afraid. Sorry about that, guys. Um, we're going to consider some of the consequences of following Jesus, both costs and also benefits. Um, following Jesus has been described as, as it says there, scary but rewarding. Um, and as a start of discussions around the table, what we'd like you to do is think about anything you might have done in your life that you would describe as scary but ultimately rewarding. Now, it could have been going on the Big Dipper or whatever that is. It could have been stepping out in, of your comfort zone and doing something. It could have been moving to a different country, looking at no one in particular. Um, whatever it might be, but just to, th just to have a, uh, just to really to start you talking to each other, um, just to think about that. Um, also to say, on the tea tables that side, we've got some craft, craft activities, which I see are already being used, um, which those of you who were here last week, they may look familiar to, uh, because it's all about the Lord is my shepherd, and, and obviously if we're following Jesus, we're following him partly as shepherd. So there are things to colour in, stick and cut out, and generally be crafty with. But please do start talking to each other. What was the last thing you did that was scary but rewarding? Perhaps it was climbing Snowden. <laughs> and then we'll, we'll bring it all back together in a couple of minutes. Thanks. Rob. Right, guys. Um, just, to, just to bring you back, I, I hope you had some good discussions and heard some interesting stories. Um, we're not going to uh, feed back generally because I think we'd be here until lunchtime and beyond if, if everyone wanted to say everything they'd done, but I hope you got into the, the flavour of that. Um, what we're now going to do is listen to a couple of readings about following Jesus. Now, the first of these readings is from Matthew's Gospel, uh, chapter 16, verses 21 to 28, and we're going to present this as a drama in which Phil is going to play Jesus, so hopefully not going to be typecast. Uh, Micah is going to play Peter, and we need to have some disciples. So if anyone of any age would like to volunteer to be a disciple and just whoop, sit here at the front, that, that would be really helpful. So we don't need 12, but it can be any age. Yes, Lois, it can be you, any age. So, okay. Am I now... Phil's going to use this, Rob. Okay. No, no, tell light. Mike is going to use this. Okay, so, right, disciples, there are two things, that, two things you need to do. Two things, you, yeah, you, you, yeah, sit with them. You're, you're a disciple. So, there are two things you need to do. When Jesus says Jerusalem, you have to go, oh, so that's the first thing. And the other thing is when Jesus wants you to gather around him, you have to gather around. So, over to you, Jesus. Wait, what? I'm just, oh. <laughs> Listen, all of you, this is hard. I've got to go to Jerusalem. <gasps> I know it will be difficult. It's going to be difficult for all of us. I'm going there to endure great suffering at the hands of the chief priests and the scribes. I'm destined to be killed and raised on the third day. God forbid, no. God forbid. This has never happened to you. Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Gather round, everybody. There's something that you all need to understand. <laughs> We're coming, Jesus. Sorry, it took us a bit. <laughs> Some of my disciples are more obedient than others. We were coming. If, Give us a if any of you want to become my followers, 
they will need to deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me where I have to go. Those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. What will it profit anyone to gain the whole world but forfeit their life? What will they give in return for their life? The Son of Man is to come in glory with his angels, in the glory of his Father. Then he will repay everyone for what they have done. I tell you truly, there are some here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Thank you all. Um, our second reading about the consequences of um, following Jesus is from Paul's letter to the Romans, which Janet's going to read for us. Love in action. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honour one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervour serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who... Rejoice with those who rejoice, mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Janet. So having heard the readings and realised some of the consequences of following Jesus, we're now going to, to sing again, Lord, I come to you. Let my heart be changed, renewed.
Okay, uh, so one thing that's almost definitely going to be a consequence of following Jesus is that you'll be filled with, faced even with some difficult choices. So to help you think about that, we're going to give you each table three scenarios for you to consider and discuss as a group. Now, in each one, you're faced with a dilemma. And you may all agree on the best way forward, and that'll be a very short discussion. Or you may come up with a different solution. There's no definitive right or wrong answer. You can discuss more than one scenario if you've got time, or you can carry on discussing over coffee as you prefer. So I'm just going to... Am I still on this one? Still on this one? Pass, pass these out. So the first scenario is about the fact that you've got three things to do on the same evening and which do you decide to do. The second one is all about discovering that someone you work with may have had their hands in the till, but you're not certain, and uh, what do you do about that. And then the third one is about when uh, uh, your friend says, oh, I've got this wonderful new boyfriend, and you know that the new boyfriend is not as wonderful as she thinks. <laughs> so uh, what do you do in those circumstances? So. Um, if you, if that, though, that, that's that in, in, in essence. I've got some spare ones, so I'll pop them onto some things where there are a number of people. There you go. And uh, there's quite a few of you on that one as well, aren't there? Oh, there's another one there for you. Right. Okay. Hope nobody's fallen out too much. Um... I won't ask for show of hands who's, who's going to dob in and who's going to keep quiet. Um, as I said, th there's, there's no definitive answers, but maybe a good starting point is simply when you're faced with a difficult decision to make sure that you call upon Jesus and bring him into the decision-making process. So uh, just a quick prayer. Lord, we thank you for gifts of discernment and wisdom and we pray that we may call upon those in your name when faced with choices that are difficult to make. Amen. Uh, we're now going to, to sing again, again about keeping our eyes upon Jesus. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart.
Um, we're talking about the joys and rewards of following uh, Jesus. As you can see, we have a beautiful cake. Thank you, Joan. And um, after the service, we're going to eat it. I have brought gluten, dairy, and wheat-free alternatives. So everybody's catered for, which is fantastic. Um, but first, a little work. In your groups at the table, I want you to talk about the pros and cons of following Jesus. And I want you to um, discuss and come back to us with some ideas about what this may be. A pro might be having a support network that cares for each other and is there in times of trouble and good times. A con might be, and this is purely personal to me, um, getting bogged down by the business side of church. And others might be following certain rules. Um, so spend a, a few moments in your, on your tables talking about any suggestions you have. And then for every suggestion you make, we'll, we, we have candles on the cake. Um, we will light a candle. So discuss. Okay, Richard's going to come round uh, the tables and see if anybody has anything they'd like to share. Right. Is this working? Okay, folks. Would anyone like to share just one positive thing about following Jesus? Yes. Having churches are... My second family, I've always thought about it. Okay, so one positive reason for following Jesus is that you can find... Sorry, too close. Okay, like that, like that. Higher, lower. Um, is having a second family at church. So that's a good reason. Especially Aiken. Anybody, anybody want to say anything from this table? Go on. Uh, yeah, whatever, whatever okay. you want. Um, I think one con um, is uh, you find when people assume or find out that you are a Christian, they assume how you'll react to things. Uh, so I've lost a number of friends who've said, no, you're a Christian, you're going to hate me, so we're not friends anymore. And you're just there like, I, I, okay, sure. Um, and there's no convincing them. But again, that's all based on assumption of what other Christians they've seen in the media are like. So. Okay, thank you. Anybody else got anything they want to share? Anything from this table? Anyone want to say something good? Good. I'd say people might think you like differently because you are a Christian, so you might have to act more like your behaviour should be should act more like a, as like a Christian more than like a non-religious person. I'd say. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So if you are more on display as a Christian, once you put your head above the parapet, does anyone want to say anything from here, Joan? Following, um, uh, being a Christian and following Jesus, I just feel safe and loved and secure. So that's a real pro for me. Okay. Thanks, Joan. Anyone from this table? Sorry, Joan said she felt safe and loved and secure. Anyone from this table? Fan. So my pro is knowing, kind of having a feeling that in certain processes that I know the path or I know what I need to do um, and having uh, a sort of a framework or guidance to follow but a con would be the weight that puts on me um, to always do follow that process when actually sometimes 
it would be easier to not, or it might be simpler to not. So I suppose that's merely a self-imposed weight and kind of, but yeah, the burden of doing the right thing when you have a conscience and, a, and God in your heart telling you the right thing to do. Thank you, Fran. So yes, having a conscience is wonderful, but sometimes it can uh, be a burden as well. Does anybody, anyone? Jill? We just said, said that um, belonging to the family of the church and to Jesus means that we've got other people who share our burdens. When life gets tough, there are people around who will hold us. I think that's what Joan was saying, in a sense. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else want to share anything that um, came out of the sc- Does anybody wear a cross? Uh, or a, or a um, fish? And does anybody have any experiences of, of that? Moira. Well, okay, sorry. I can't. Come back to you, Lizzie. Um, when I used to travel down to London to my sons regularly, I don't anymore, um, I always had a fish um, symbol on my coat. And you would be amazed how many people stopped and said, oh, you're a Christian, and got into some lovely conversations with total strangers on the train. And I once had an appointment with the bank manager, and he commented on it, and he was a Christian. And it it does make a difference, you know, people recognize those things. yeah, gives you an opening, you know, to sort of discuss uh, your faith. Yeah, it's very good. Thank you. That's wonderful. It must have been a few years ago if you actually managed to speak to a bank manager. <laughs> I think one of the pros is just knowing you've got somewhere to turn with your burdens that you can um, talk to God about them. I think if you're like me, I do everything else before I do that, and then I have to remember constantly to turn to Jesus with my, my worries and my fears and the things I'm concerned about. I think one of the cons for me is, I think that the exercise we did earlier showed that sometimes trying to discern what the right way is, what, the, what God's way is in a situation is really hard, and like Fran said, you can feel that burden of you, you feel that there's a right way in there somewhere, but it's not always, it's not always handed, us to, handed it to us clearly, is it? We have to do a lot of, lot of working out for ourselves. <laughs> Thank you, Lizzie. Okay, one more, one more. Of course, ending with Jesus. <laughs> no pressure. Um, no, I just wanted to say we've talked about doing the right thing and feeling a burden, but also I just want that Jesus offers us forgiveness as well, that, that he knows that we don't always do the right thing and we don't always live up to those standards, but that he offers forgiveness. And I think ending with Jesus' grace is a very good way to end. Oh, hang on. Do you want me to? Uh, all <laughs> oh, right. Okay. Oh, right. Okay. Fine. We have all the candles left uh, lit, apart from the one that hadn't got a wick, which I'm sure there's something very theological we can say about that, but I can't think what it is at the moment. Um, Jerry. Uh, so yeah, just thank you very much for sharing your experiences. Um, on the count of three, we're going to shout, "Thank you, Jesus." And then if somebody would like to blow out the candles from over here, that would be great. So, after the count of three, thank you, Jesus. One, two, three. Thank you, Jesus. Who would like to blow out the candles? Yeah, well done, Luke. (laughs) Be careful. Yay! Um, okay, uh, I'm just glad my daughter-in-law wasn't there because I don't think it isn't here because I don't think we've done a risk assessment, but uh, it's all fine now. All the candles are out. So just just a few brief thoughts uh, before we sing again. Um, Obviously, we've seen there are costs as well as benefits of following Jesus. I was reminded, um, bizarrely enough, of Chris Martin from Coldplay, who sang in a song 
in a completely different context, nobody said it was easy, but that's the gist of what we're saying. But at the same time, we do want to stress that following Jesus is worth it. It is the greatest thing. And some of the things that you said in response to, to that really bear that out. Following Jesus sets us apart. I mean, the Greek word for church was ecclesia, which means called out. And that, we accept, can be costly. It can lead us into challenging situations. But we need to realise in those situations that we are stronger when we support each other and acknowledge and support the faith that we see in each other. The disciples were in a hostile society, but they survived because they overcame divisions and collaborated. And for us, it's always better to focus on our common bonds rather than our differences. And if we look at Peter, the Gospels are very clear, very frank about the ups and downs that Peter suffers. In this story we saw, you know, Peter said, get behind me, Satan. The next story in Matthew's Gospel, Gospel is the transfiguration where Peter is one of the chosen ones to go up the mountain with Jesus. So sometimes we get it right, sometimes we fall flat on our face. But we acknowledge our mistakes because Jesus and God will always continue to welcome us as part of the family and offer the, us the opportunity to continue the adventure of Christian faith. We saw the roller coaster at the beginning, it's an adventure. But the disciples also needed to understand that life with Jesus couldn't always just be interesting, exciting, and rewarding. There's suffering, there are hard times. Now, what does that mean for our church community today? Are we ready for real opposition? In today's world, what form does that opposition take? We need to consider that, because sometimes the opposition isn't as obvious as we might think. Peter had passion. Passion is a tremendous asset, but it can be a liability if it's not tamed at times. If we follow Jesus, we can't put our conditions on that, even though we may want to and we can't control Jesus, but we have to find solidarity in that faith journey and support each other to make the right choices in difficult places. We will sometimes get it wrong, but there is always a way back to God, and we find it in his amazing and never-ending grace. So we want to follow the path that God is setting out before us, but we find it difficult when that path leads us out of our comfort zone. This, of course, leaves a lot of questions, but we continue to learn and to journey together with each other, and most importantly with Jesus, as we all seek together to follow him in all of our lives, whatever our age or stage in our Christian journey. So we pray that we may be able together to continue this journey in our faith and with God's grace. Amen. We're now going to sing an appropriate song when we've been talking about grace. Everyone needs compassion, a love that's never failing, as we celebrate the love of Jesus for us.
to our prayers for others at the end of each section of prayer there'll be a couple of seconds and then please respond with me with the words on the screen merciful God hear our prayer let's pray Lord God you scolded Peter because he had only human concerns but Peter just wanted to protect the one he loved we pray for people the world over who find themselves in difficult situations. We pray that they would all have someone to care for them and we lift them before you. Merciful God, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are persecuted for their faith, for all who are misunderstood, for asylum seekers who, feel, who flee real danger in their homeland. We pray for those who work tirelessly to address wrongs. Merciful God, hear our prayer. We pray for people whose lives don't always work out right, through their fault or through no fault of their own. Merciful God, hear our prayer. We pray for the people in our lives who need your protection, Lord that we will always be faithful in prayer for them. And in a few moments in silence, let's remember those people. Merciful God, hear our prayer. Amen. And we join together in the Lord's Prayer, the modern version, hopefully. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We sing our final song, In Christ Alone, singing the faith 351.
before we have our sending out prayer, I want you to do something for us this week. When you see a cross, and you may see it anywhere, on books, jewelry, on buildings, when you see it, smile and give thanks for Jesus' call to take up the cross and follow him. And when appropriate, talk to people about it. So our sending out prayer. Father God, when things are tough, we say together, help us to walk with you. When life is good, help us to walk with you. On the good days, the bad days, and the average days, help us to walk with you. Amen. And may God's word be in your heart. May God's word be on your lips. May God's word be in your touch. May God's word direct your feet on this day and all your days to come. May God's word be the life you live. Amen.